pi squared equals to jump, 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 p s p s jump, jump, equals to pi. So. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Payam. All right, so hello everyone. And today we're gonna do something that's truly exciting not to teach. And I know I say this every time, but this is really, really exciting. Namely, we're actually gonna calculate the integral from minus infinity to infinity of e of minus x squared dx. And the reason this is so exciting is because in calculus courses, you learn that this does not have an antiderivative. And in fact, it's true. You can even prove it does not have an antiderivative using advanced algebra. But um, it turns out that even with this inconvenience, we can still calculate the integral from minus infinity to infinity of this function. And the way we're going to do this is literally kill a fly with a bazooka. <laughs> Namely, we will use um, multivariable calculus to solve this single variable uh, integral. So, you know, be excited. <laughs> so, let's, let's name this integral. Because we mathematicians love notation, so let's call this i. And look. You know how they say potato, potato? Well, uh, here we use x, but we could have just named it something else. We could also, for example, have named this y. So, y, you'll see. Okay, so, it turns out that i is also equal to e of minus y squared dy. Or, you know, if you forgot, is e of minus skull squared d skull. <laughs> But here, the reason we use this is, again, because we want to use multivariable calculus. Okay, great. So we have that. And now, let's just multiply both sides. If you multiply this by this, on the other hand, yeah, on the other hand, you get i squared. On the other hand, you get integral from minus infinity to infinity, e of minus x squared dx times integral from minus infinity to infinity e of minus y squared dy. You can actually now put this integral inside of this integral, just put both of those together, and you get integral from minus infinity to infinity, integral from minus infinity to infinity e of minus x squared, e of minus y squared dx dy, or I guess dy dx. And again, it's, maybe it's easier to think of it from the right-hand side to the left-hand side, because if you look at this integral, well, this does not depend on y, so we can just pull this one outside. And then the resulting integral does not depend on x, so you can put this one outside. So the point is, this formula makes sense, but the nice thing is, now we can actually use multivariable calculus, because we have dy dx, and therefore, one thing you can do is just write this one as integral minus infinity to infinity, integral minus infinity to infinity, e of minus x squared plus y squared dx dy. We can change this by what's called Fubini's theorem. Okay, but this is actually very, very exciting. I'm sure you've already seen this before. x squared plus y squared, square root of that, is actually the distance from zero to a point x comma y. And whenever you see distances, it should remind you of polar coordinates, which is a useful change of coordinates that allows us actually to calculate this integral. And let me just motivate this a little bit. So, on the one hand, what is this saying? Uh, this is saying that uh, x and y go from minus infinity to infinity. So, um, in other words, if x goes from minus infinity to infinity and y goes from minus infinity to infinity, it really sweeps out the whole plane. And here we're just, you know, speaking up in a linear fashion. And now, when you use what's called polar coordinates, you actually will sweep it out in a circle or fashion. And first, let me write down the result. It's integral um, from 0 to 2 pi, integral from uh, 0 to infinity of e of 
minus r squared r dr d theta. And you may see how in the world did I get those bounds from 0 to infinity and 0 to 2 pi? Well, if you know polar coordinates, it's a very circular thing. And what this is saying is you consider circles from 0 to 2 pi with radius r. So here theta is the angle, and the angle goes from 0 to 2 pi. And which means you sweep it out in circles, but now the radius, it goes from zero to infinity. What that means is you're really sweeping out or filling the plane with circles. So in other words, if you integrate this function, you're really summing this function over the whole plane because you're filling the, the plane with circles. And that's why you have that the radius goes from zero to infinity to have all the, all the circles, but the angle goes from 0 to 2 pi to actually get circles. Okay. And this little junk here, this little sucker, it's, it's sort of the residue, you know, the, the, the junk that comes from um, uh, change of variables, and I'd be happy to explain it in a different video. But it's the, it's the analog when you do the u substitution, you have du equals to ju some junk times dx, well, the junk here is r. And usually it's an inconvenience because you always want to eliminate it. But here is actually very, very useful because we can actually find an antiderivative of this function. Namely, the antiderivative is minus one half e of minus r squared from r equals to zero to r equals to infinity. And d theta. And now, if r goes to infinity, r squared gets very big, and minus r squared is negative infinity, so this goes to zero. On the other hand, if you plug in r equals to zero, you get one, and then you get minus minus appearing, if you like. From zero to two pi of zero minus minus one half e of minus zero d theta. And therefore, you get 0 to 2 pi, uh, 1 half d theta. But the integral of 1 half from 0 to 2 pi is 1 half times 2 pi. And that's pi. It's, you know, nutritious and mathematical. OK, so we found the answer pi. But what is it the answer to? Usually it's the answer to life, but here, <laughs> let's see what we did. We calculated i squared, we get this junk, this junk, this junk, bs, polar units, <laughs> blah, 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 whatever, we get pi. So if you trace everything back, you get that i squared, the thing you want, equals to pi. And now, well, usually it means that i is square root of pi or negative square root of pi. But look at this. Look at this pretty fluffy function. It's a positive function. So the integral better be positive. And therefore, i, which is integral from zero, from uh, negative infinity to infinity, e of minus x squared dx is square root of pi. Ta-da! And uh, so this is actually, it's, again, it's amazing because even though you could, can't find the antiderivative of this function, you can still calculate the integral from minus infinity to infinity. Uh, but also it's really useful in statistics. It's very useful for the normal distribution, for example, to weigh it correctly. But for purposes of this, we are done and we can go home happy. Thank you very much. Yay! Yeah. Woo. Now, <laughs> cheese roll time. Mmm! So sweet! It's sweet, oh, yeah! No, no, no. I'm really good! I yeah, told you! Hi! He is going to have his own channel. Of course, I will have a link in the description for you guys. If you want to have some more math fun and math excitement, check it out. Ooh. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe to both of our channels. Bye! Bye.